Hey, what's going on everybody? My name is Jay and welcome to The Ship Life. So as usual, we do have a ton of cruise news to unpack. In particular, we will be talking about news concerning NCL. However, I do want to remind all of you before we get started that I am currently in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and tomorrow I will be on the inaugural sailing for the world's largest cruise ship, Royal Caribbean's Wonder of the Seas. And I will be doing a live stream tonight at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to take all of your questions you guys might have and just to kind of give you a little rundown of the types of videos I'll be putting out, like the Sweets tour you know the $50,000 suites and my room tour because obviously I'm not in a $50,000 suite the embarkation day all of that jazz so anyway guys 6 p.m. tonight make sure you tune in now for this video we do have to talk about the CEO of NCL Frank Del Rio as he is pretty much over the CDC he's being very vocal about it he talks about things that were mentioned in his earnings call as far as why they decided to opt into the CDC's new guidance and regulations and it, it's a lot going on but also when it comes to NCL we got to talk about how NCL is going to make your cruise potentially a lot more expensive well maybe not a lot but either way it's it's definitely going to increase your overall pricing for your cruise and we also have an update from crystal cruises when it comes to the crew members so let's go ahead and get started so we do have to talk about the ceo that we all know and love ncl's frank del rio well some of you out there might not love the guy i know some of you have been uh, pretty vocal about that however we have the ceo of ncl frank del rio he's being pretty vocal too just about the cdc now i do want to be clear that when it comes to ncl if you guys haven't noticed the the past uh, two years or so during the pandemic, NCL has been kind of lining up with the CDC. Even though they've kind of displayed their disdain for the CDC, they have been some of the ones that have been stepping up as far as the cruise line is concerned with NCL, Oceana, and Region 7 Seas, as far as their health and safety protocols. Now, keep in mind, when cruise lines like Royal Caribbean, for example, was making exemptions for people that were not vaccinated and masking and all that, NCL had some of the strictest rules and policies when it came to that exact set of rules, regulations, and policies during the pandemic. However, of course, you have Frank Dorio. He's saying that he believes that the CDC has been kind of picking on the cruise lines. And because of that, the cruise industry has suffered for the past 18 months. And no other sector has seen the scrutiny and bullying and uh, just all the, the, the crazy stuff that's gone on, which obviously I do agree with. However, unlike other industries and sectors, cruising is kind of ruled by the CDC. The CDC controls and dictates essentially what the cruise industry does. It sucks, but it is what it is. Now you do have Frank Del Rio again. He's admitting that he's just being vocal about how he feels about the CDC. Essentially what he is saying is that we do not see, need the CDC as a company, as an organization or health authorities, health officials to come in and tell us how to keep our passengers and everybody on board our cruise ships safe. Now I do agree, but however, when I read this initially yesterday, it kind of made me think of the, uh, the cruise ship Karen, the lady that says she doesn't need Royal Caribbean to, to be in control of her life. Now, I, I know it's a completely different situation. However, it's just funny. Just, it, just to remind all of you guys, just take a listen. I'm going to be in charge of my own f***ing life. I'm tired of Royal Caribbean telling me what I got to do when you're f***ing lying to us. Okay, so I wanted to play that clip because it was funny, but it's not the same scenario. I think Frank Del Rio does have a legitimate, valid point because whenever the CDC implements some guidelines, let's be fair, NCL has come in and kind of won up the setup for the guidance to make sure everybody is safe on board their ships. And overall, they've done a great job. Now, when it comes to NCL opting into the CDC's new uh, guidance as far as masking and COVID policies and their color-coded system, Frank Del Rio said they did it because they want to continue to build a better relationship with the CDC which obviously is very smart and from a business standpoint from a uh, just a nonsensical standpoint just overall for the community of cruising and then just for health and safety especially during this horrible time during the pandemic that's affected so many lives and businesses I do believe it's just overall a good move for NCL to do however when you look at everything as far as uh, you know the the ending of the pandemic the endemic that everybody's talking about Frank Del Rio is saying that yes the numbers are going down cases are going down the severity of the virus is going down of course with Omicron and when you look at just everything as a whole, it is kind of getting to a point where a lot of people don't like to hear this term, but it is time to kind of live with the virus. Now, again, some people don't agree with it. Some people do. However, I believe these are very valid points. Now, even though Frank Del Rio with NCL doesn't like the CDC, again, he's trying to work with them so that they can find some common ground and hopefully we can get back to normal. But either way, he was just pointing out that he just doesn't believe that NCL needs the CDC or the cruise line or the industry for that matter needs the CDC 
CDC to step in and try to pretty much baby them and be the parent to try to figure out what they need to do because I've mentioned this before myself. These companies are not children running around. These are full grown adults that are capable of making their own decisions and deciding what's best for their customers. Personally, I wholeheartedly agree. I believe that, especially in a place like America where business, I believe businesses should be able to, to succeed or fail on their own. If they mess up and should something happen like a lawsuit or an outbreak, I get, of course, it is a matter of health and safety for everybody, not just people getting sick on a cruise ship. Either way, I believe that the cruise line should have a little bit more control, especially considering where we are at this point during the pandemic. But of course, let me know your thoughts, guys. Don't take my word for it. I do want to hear from you in the comment section below. Now let's move on. So in more in NCL news, starting on April 1st, 2022, NCL will be implementing gratuity hikes. Gratuity is just a fancy word for saying tips. The daily fees that are incurred on your cruise, they're going to increase by 3% for NCL ships. For your standard stateroom or cabin, it is going to be going from $15.50 to $16. You're talking about the Haven Suites, it's going to go from $18.50 to $20. And if you are on a club balcony, it's just going to be a flat rate of $18. Now, of course, you can get discounts if you prepay your gratuities, which is is an option on most cruises but here's the catcher a lot of people will say that that's not a lot of money but you got to include other fees which i'll talk about in a minute and unlike other major cruise lines like royal caribbean and carnival ncl is a little bit different so whenever they charge you the fees on board these ships usually it's per cabin with ncl it is per guest if a guest is staying in a room and they are three and up basically you have your own separate charge so let's say for example somebody is staying in the haven or you have two people rather staying in the haven and Instead of paying that charge $20, it now goes to $40, so on and so forth. And when you times that by seven on your standard one week cruise, you can see how that can very quickly add up. Now, of course, when you look at the other cruise lines, you stack it up against, aside from, of course, the luxury cruise lines out there, but I'm talking about the big three. If you look at Royal Caribbean for a standard stat stateroom or a cabin, typically it's around $14.50, and then for Carnival, usually it's around $3.99 or basically just $14. And of course, it goes up determining, of course, by the suites, so your Royal Suites and of course, the Havana Suites with Carnival. Either way, you get the idea. Now, of course, things like this is just good business. Well, I wouldn't say good business. Nobody, as far as a consumer, wants to see and have to pay more but from a business standpoint when you look at things like inflation and the cost of everything which I could imagine during the pandemic the cost for cruise lines as far as getting toilet paper and all the other stuff that they need in order to provide you a great cruise has probably increased uh, somewhat a decent amount either way guys this is the situation of course like I said if you guys want to be able to pay a little bit less you can of course prepay prior to your cruise and go on from there anyway guys that's the update let me know how you feel about it in the comment section below so finally, let's talk about a brief update from the Crystal Cruiser saga in regards to the crew members. I know a lot of people are curious as far as how this whole thing is panning out for the crew members. Are they getting paid? Are there still crew members on board? Well, we got a little bit of information that I want to share with all of you. So as of tomorrow, March 4th, 2022, basically you have uh, Crystal Symphony and the Crystal Serenity. They're two main ships that we all know that were uh, seized and are now in custody. Basically 100 on, on the Symphony and 100 on the Serenity. This is, of course, due to like pretty much the laws as far as men regulations in order to have a ship that is in uh, operation or at least running and moving around you have to have a minimum of 100 crew members on board to maintain everything it's just kind of the lay of the land now I'm not gonna go over all the details that's just the idea 100 people per ship but basically when you look at last week on board the two ships between the two there were about 450 crew members we had about 250 that went home earlier this week and we do know that all the crew members that are currently on board are still being paid this is of course due to something known as the ILO the International Labor Organization. Basically, there's that, and it's like somewhat of an insurance policy to ensure that crew members get paid should something happen, like, of course, a bankruptcy, something of that nature. Now, it is kind of curious to me because when we look at what happened, if you guys remember, back in 2020, you guys remember Bahamas Paradise, that one soon to be Margaritaville at sea? Basically, they had something where they weren't paying their crew members. I wonder if the, uh, the OLI, or I'm, I'm saying it wrong now, uh, the organization, I wonder if that actually came into play when they went over to court and everything else but uh, either way we just know that the crew members are getting paid we know that they are taken care of which is a uh, really great for crystal cruises hopefully they continue to do so and we also know that they are putting the ship up for sale the banks that essentially own the cruise ships that have been seized so we don't know who the buyers are going to be it'd be nice to see a big name potentially come out or maybe even a smaller cruise line to come in and kind of put their foot in the door and try to somewhat at some point within the next uh, couple decades maybe compete with the bigger lines and we can see them just kind of grow from a, a baby cruise line to a bigger cruise line. 
Anyway, that is the updates, guys. I apologize for kind of being all over the place for this video. I'm very excited to go on Wonder of the Seas tomorrow. There is still so much for me to get done. I got to take Lauren around, my girlfriend. She just got in from France last night, and she'll be on the live stream, by the way, too, guys. So make sure you tune in, and uh, we're going to have a great time on Wonder of the Seas. Either way, of course, guys, hit that like button on your way out. Share this video. It goes a very long way in support of my channel. Subscribe. I'm at 94,000 subscribers. I'm trying to get to 100K before the end of my sailing on Wonder of the Seas, which I believe is very doable, and uh, we'll see. I appreciate all of you. I'll see you tonight. Take it easy.